Hello, everyone. Welcome back to a lovely brand new Trifles podcast here in the middle of October with your lovely friends, Sips, Hearing Flax, and I. Uh, it's so nice to, uh, to be here and share with you all the mundane garbage that we've been up to this week. <laughs> and boy, have we been up to a lot of it. Lean back in your chairs right now or rest your head on a comfortable pillow. Get that rocking chair rocking because we've got nothing to say. And uh, that's right. you get to listen to it for an hour. Enjoy. No, but thank you for listening. Oh, oh no, sorry. That was... <laughs> if we've got nothing to say, we could just stop early. Guys. Yeah, we, can, we, just, can, you know. we can go for the shortest podcast we've ever done what yeah. i wonder uh, the uh, people collect stats on the podcast all the time mm. i wonder which episode um is the shortest of all episodes mm. there's got to be one that was like half an hour long because no, Lewis had to think... go to an appointment or something no we've never done a half hour i i think we've definitely done sub hour but i don't think we've ever done one that was half an hour because i don't I it just is think hard we to consistently fill a whole hour with such sparkling content yeah um with, with with such colorful commentary yeah banter yes yeah I, i've been watching a lot of videos on youtube and uh yes and after your recommendations they they're all cropping up now for me the ones you recommended which ones did i'm not I sure i love any of them particularly you like like man and boy go camping um, oh those were very sweet yeah they're very, it's, yeah. it's nice to see the techniques uh baseball yeah, I, and, I, 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 I didn't think that would be for you. John Boy Media and all that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And um, other man goes outside and picks up litter, Miles. picks up stuff. Bo Miles is very good. He's interesting, actually. Yeah, I did watch good. a few of his. He's all right, well, I've got another good. one for you. This is, a, <laughs> this is a, an American comedian called Joe Perra. Right. P-E-R-A. Uh -huh. um, he's, uh, he's a New Yorker. He's from upstate New York. But he's um. His his style is uh, kind of grandfatherly. It's been described. So he's a he's youngish guy, but he sort of pretends, well, not pretends, but his persona that he puts on for the act is um, a very slow speaking, very gentle grandpa type figure. He has right. a special on YouTube. It's on his channel on YouTube. It's about fifty five minutes long, and it's one of the funniest stand up specials I've seen in recent times. It's brilliant. Um, he's very much an alternative comedian. It's like a character. Uh, it's brilliant. It, it's, he's absolutely brilliant. He's done a few things on Adult Swim, but I think he deserves to be huge because he's genuinely original like a, and like, funny. Like a like a Neil Hamburger type, like a like a a comedian playing a character comedian doing stand up comedy sort of thing. Is yeah, it like that? I guess. I mean, it, it's it's much more. It's very very clever. Um, and he he's excellent. He does he does audience interaction stuff as well, and you can see he's almost breaking character because it's very funny. Um, but he's 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 just superb. Um, it almost feels awkward, but it's very, very, very well done and controlled. And he's basically got the audience in, in the palm of his hand. When you see a comedian able to manipulate the audience that way, it's almost like magic. So um, it's really, really well worth watching. But one of the other channels I think I may have recommended is called Townsends. Which I, think is not I, a, I think yeah. I recall you mentioning that yeah it's not a not a low-key channel they've got like three million subs or whatever and they do 18th century cooking there is a video that they put out that is just joe Perra on their show he did like multiple appearances on the on the townsend channel right. making making a stool or making a pie with joe Perra, and it's really funny and sweet and very gentle um and honestly uh very charming so i would recommend it his his special is also very very funny you think it's just going to be gentle grandfatherly stuff, but then he'll veer out into other things. It, it's brilliant. So that, that would be my recommendation for the week for, for YouTube. We Thank you oh. so much. Well, uh, I also have a TV show if you want a TV show. We, oh okay, my God, no, let's, man. let's do. We're doing this then, are we? Okay. Go oh, jeez, you it. said we had nothing to talk about. We don't have anything we to talk about. We have All right, we I, have nothing to talk about. So uh, the other thing I've been watching is called Station Eleven. Station Eleven. Um, mm. Which is a oh, show. I've seen that. I think it's on yeah. Paramount. We're watching it on Prime. It's a post-apocalyptic um, TV show, essentially based after a terrible flu that has a 99% mortality rate. Um, it was made in 2014. It was written in 2014, sorry, and then adapted. So it, it, this was a pre-COVID um, flu pandemic story. It is like no show I've seen in recent times. I think Mrs. F and I are watching it. It's very, very dense um, and layered. And I think Mrs. F and I agreed that the closest you could come to explaining what it's like is like Margaret Atwood style of almost fantasy, um, sort of post-apocalyptic. It's, it's really quite strange in parts, but brilliant. Absolutely. Mm. Brilliant. Um, and uh, I'm, we haven't finished it yet, but we're about eight episodes in. 
it's it's fantastic. I recommend it. It's not a casual watch. You don't just chuck it on and and do the ironing. You you need to be paying attention. It's it's multi layered. It's it's a su- superb show. One of the best shows I've seen in a while. So I recommend it. Yeah, Sarah recommended it to me, and I got bored about five episodes in. Well, it's not for everyone. <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't watched it, but uh, I do like my. I do like me a post-apocalyptic setting for mm. a show to take place in. It's uh, like one of my it's favorite defi- themes. Yeah, it's definitely weird. Like it's because it's, it's sort of set with this sort of traveling Shakespearean company. Yeah, do you know what I mean? That's why it's like it's a bit. There's, there's these things that are a bit off about it, right? Yeah. Um. So they they yeah, literally it's, it's cool. We we see people from before and we see people after. I would describe it as a post apocalyptic story where the post apocalyptic element is the gentlest in some ways compared to something like The Walking Dead or right. like The Road, which right. is just brutality constantly misery this is kind of different um it's almost like a background thing rather than the foreground looks like we're out of canned peaches tom well we have to go down to zombie town and get some more you know it's not like that it's not a procedural how would you survive the apocalypse it's, it's one more like on, what uh, would humanity look like I, yeah i saw an ad for one on i think it's on film four of all places but it's um you know the woman who plays the uh, the wife of Frank Underwood in uh, in House of Cards. Yes, it's her. She's she's directed it. It's a, it's a, I think it's a series, but it looks like she's like just moving out into the wilderness. I can't. I think mm. it's called Land. That's Robin Wright. Robin Wright. That's yeah. It. She's she's excellent. Yeah, she's very good. And uh, from what I can tell, it's. Uh, it's about a woman who just w- moves out into the middle of nowhere. Mm. Um, I don't. My, I mean, I don't know much more about it, but it looked interesting in that you know it 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 looked like it maybe it was like a like a western or something, but it's not. It looks like it takes place like you know like a, up in the pines somewhere or, Is it or, or something. Is Devil's Peak? No, no I think it's, it's called Land. I think it's called I think Land. It, it, it land. obviously piques uh, your interest. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is very um, Dude Sim Alaska. Yes, what <laughs> that's what I, I got. I got big Dude Sim vibes oh. from it when I saw the ad for it. But it's one of those. I don't know. Like it's on film. There's four, a bunch of like, those, isn't there? Of 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 single person living in Alaska. Yeah, I'd be down and... for watching a sort of um, you know, it doesn't for me. It doesn't have to be action packed. <laughs> you know, I'd be happy watching somebody just meandering through survival sort of thing you know so, like, i mean that, that's what that dude three the the country dudes or whatever that video channel i, I recommend wilderness boys that's literally what mm, he does that, that he's is in alaska it. he's literally in alaska just in a building sense, like these shelters. youtube channels I like that. are, I like that. are yeah. delivering the kind of content that we expect more i think the thing the problem with movies often is that you Ben Ben said this to me this week because he went to see this new sci-fi movie. Oh, the AI one. It's called The Creator. He said he said I almost walked out. Oh like, no, no! It was like he he never normally would do that. Ben is but, not um, that kind of person. I, I I from what I know of Ben, I don't think he would do would normally do that. I don't no, he's well, too I think nice. Was, I think the yeah. problem was it's like he was going in expecting because it's it's all advertised from the creator of Rogue One. Yeah, sorry, yeah. director director of Rogue One. Right. And I like I like John David Washington. Um, he's and excellent. and yeah, like apparently he just. Re- 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 it really wasn't what he expected, and as a result, we didn't get on with it. And I think a lot of movies are like that too, right? You don't quite know what to expect, and so it's sometimes like I think it's the reason why things that are things like these shows, like The Apprentice, are so popular. It's because you kind of know what you're going to get there within the formula, so they stick to that thing. So I watched The Fall of the House of Usher. Mm. Uh, it's on Netflix. It's like their new uh, Haunting of Hill House type show, right? Right. Um, and it's Haunting of Bly Manor as well. And a, f- and a few other, there's like a bunch of ones the same guy has done recently. And this is, the whole idea is that there's this, well, in fact, even talk, talking to you about it would would spoil spoil it. Um, I guess well, I guess the opening scene is not really a spoiler, is it? The opening scene is that the, this, this patriarch of the family is at the funeral of three of his kids, you know. And so you're like, oh, you know, how do they die? And then episode by episode, you find out how each one of each member of the family dies mm. um and so it's it's like a halloween thing for 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 netflix and it's it's honestly really good i really enjoyed it um i watched the whole thing in like one day um and yeah i, I just i liked it it's like edgar Allan poe themed it's quite dark it's quite fun it doesn't mm. take itself so seriously but of course it's ludicrous you know in, in places you know yeah. some of the things that happen are 
very supernatural themed, you know, like a lot of these Haunting of Hill House, they have got some supernatural element, which means that phys- de- physics defying stuff mm. happens. Right. So wait, the, the, the creator isn't good? I'm very <laughs> no, he, disappointed. I was really looking forward to that. Well, you've ruined, the you've ruined, ben ruined, almost like, walked out on it, so... Yeah. Oh, the cr- sorry, yeah, the creator of the movie, the creator. Not the creator of... Um, not he with, the house not with a capital H. Not Ben didn't like the it. Creator. I mean, it's 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 got it's got okay reviews. I don't think this should be a podcast about where we should talk about movies that every, we haven't well, seen. Well, every once in a while, you are gonna have to have one of these, though, right? Like, okay, we, that's true. You like we watch, we do consume a lot of media between the three of us, and sometimes it's good to just meet up and discuss these medias that are being consumed, right? Mm. Maybe I think the mailbag doing the mailbag has given us such direction on the podcast that we've forgotten how to do how to do a normal no a, we haven't a no we just talk about, a board. we're just this talking is, this is what it was i think you for, I, for I, seven think years. You, I think you're over analyzing it true. i think you're yeah, I calm, am. I'm over, calm the fuck down just calm Chris. down jeez i'm overreacting sorry man so oh, man. I, I don't know if you guys can hear i've kind of lost my voice a little bit just a, just ahead of your big trip as well what are you gonna I know. do i don't know so you're gonna I'm be like croaking out. and everything i know i'm going out on tuesday um so i haven't got long uh my eldest has the same thing where she's just kind of lost her voice well, i don't feel too it'll bad it'll probably clear up by then i mean i hope so that's a i mean i took a covid still. test we're clear on the on the the vid test you um, don't sound any different well i do in person i maybe it's not coming across but um it's a little croaky are you all bunged uh, up you're, cro- a little you're croaking bit it up. up now you're no i'm not no on. it's like it, it, if i if i talk really loudly it my voice breaks a little bit and if i if i'm talking at a normal volume <clears throat> it um it kind of just croaks occasionally like it's got a vocal fry element to it um, right. my eldest right. my eldest yesterday they had i don't know what the fuck this is we never used to have this at school it's called drop down day do you guys know what a drop down no, day is no i never heard of that no. so this is this is as far as i'm concerned this is a new innovation in schooling um but here's what it is the whole day is dedicated to one thing and it's not sitting in a classroom doing lessons it'll be something different so right. my eldest she's in year um nine or ten ten uh something like that anyway uh her drop down day involved uh a guy came in a fair fair play to this lad seven hours he's teaching these kids how to do speeches how to give speeches oh my and god you have to go away and write your speech and then deliver it to the rest of the kids and he would give you tips and you know tricks and all the rest of it i'm, I'm assuming he hell. didn't give them the just imagine everyone else is naked trick because no. he's a man in a girl's school that ain't gonna go down well no but i know that that is typically meant to be one of the one of the tips you don't need that you don't need that and honestly that that that's a stupid old fashioned I trick. thought that was a stupid idea anyway I don't I, I don't think that's like on the official speech writing syllabus right but it's like one of those pieces of pat wisdom that people hand around I don't even know I would where it love came to from. have this 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 little this little rapid course on stuff I wish yeah. I wish I I could you really can. do with going back to school for a couple you of things you can go whenever you want it's it's all there. It's at your fingertips. Well, it'd be a bit weird if I turned up. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> there's lots yeah. of there's lots of uh, older people going taking night classes and stuff like that. Look at Stringer Bell. Nobody thought it was True. weird when he was when he was learning his his Need business. A business course. Yeah. So <laughs> I did. Picture. I actually took yeah. a, an evening course. Uh, this would have been about sixteen years ago now. Um, at Richmond Adult College. Um which is, oddly enough, they've got a building in Twickenham. And I went there to do a course in uh, writing for journalism because I was doing some film review stuff at the time. If you remember, I I did film reviews and things for a little bit uh, for a website. And I thought, I want to get better at this and maybe I could... uh, learn how to write properly. Yeah. And we went to the course. We were there for two weeks and then they shut the course down. Um, Right. It was like 10 of us. You were that bad. No, it was everybody, people pulled out. They were they were sat there and they did the course twice and then they decided I don't want to do this anymore and they left. Yeah. Um, oh, and the, there was it, it was an odd mix. That's how it goes. People. Well, this is routinely what happens. Um, I remember like oh anyone who's done this like any language classes will know this as well where you like you start off in in it and there's like twelve people and then. You know, by the end of the first year, there's six, you know, and then so you go to the advanced class. It's like that with and that's everything, though. Like, uh, in the new yeah. year, six when is a, the, lucky, high enough. Usually, to like, uh, the first year. well, the, the, the big one is people going to the gym in the new year, you know, like New Year's resolutions and stuff. But especially with kids, we, we find like, because we still, we still have a, a, a young baby who. Mm. 
we take to like, you know, play groups or, or whatever, because it's good for them. Like, she, I mean, she gets a lot of socializing anyway, because she's got older siblings, but it's still nice for her to be around kids her age and learning how to interact with them and, and all that kind of stuff. Mm. And uh, it's the same thing. The first one, it's like packed, tons of people. And then these, they usually go on like during term time, right? So it's like a couple of weeks, like it's like, you know, six, six to eight weeks or whatever. And then by the end of it, there's like nobody. <laughs> You're like last man standing. Like people just drop off all the time. Yeah. They think that it's going to be this new thing that they're going to do. And then very quickly they realize, ah, I don't actually want to do this at all. I, yeah. This is not becoming part of my routine. I'm, I'm out. Well, so, I found it a real shame because um, it wasn't a bad course. I was enjoying it. The, the, the interesting thing to me was the other people on the course, like um, at school, you just turn up and everyone's in the same boat. You just have to be there. But understanding why people have volunteered or paid to come to something was really interesting. And you had a couple of people there who were just like, I don't know, I just want to give it a go. Um, there were a couple of people who were like, I want to try and get onto a, a journalism course and I just wanted to see if I'd be any good at it, stuff like that. Um, I said that it was because I was writing reviews for you know this website and I wanted to, to try and improve. And then there was this one guy, he, he wore a suit to the class. Everyone else just wore casual gear because it was like eight, nine o'clock at night, but he just wore a suit um, and he worked for a legal firm or something like that. And they asked him, the teacher asked what he was doing the journalism course for. And he said, oh, uh, well, I keep a journal and I want to improve the writing quality of the journal. And okay. th they were like, OK, I mean, I don't know if he thought that journalism was about writing journals. Journaling. Um, I think but, so. Yes. But he was literally <laughs> writing Journaling. a journal and they said, oh, Who's the journal for? Are you going to publish it or put it online? He goes, no, it's just for me. And they were like, what's it about? He goes, oh, well, everybody's wrong about everything these days. So I just keep a journal of, of my thoughts to make sure that I'm correct and clear. So it was almost <laughs> like he was writing some kind of <laughs> manifesto of modern society. Uh, yeah. And I, I was fascinated by this lad. I wanted to hear more from him and see what he wrote. Um, and I, I remember we had to do homework one time and bring it in. This was the second week. And then the third week, no one turned up. And I got a phone call. But the second week, his journal for that week was like things that he'd seen on television that week that were wrong. Um, oh, my it, God. It was like the Triforce it podcast. Was, yeah, it oh, was yeah. unbelievable. It was yeah. like a precursor to this podcast. Um, I was watching The Apprentice uh, with Alan Sugar <laughs> and uh, shocking lack of insight from Nick this week. You know, this is just so funny. Oh, my God. Come on, man. Nick hasn't been guy. on the show for like so long. You know what? I'm sorry. This was 16 years ago. So it, it should have been. Yeah, I know. Um, Man, I think I'm done with The Apprentice. Like, I'm if it, it comes back, I'm I'm just not watching it. I, I'm, That's a lie. I'm boycotting. You're going to watch it. No You're going to watch way. it. Oh yeah, you will. No way. Take no I'm done. These, um, I am done. I think these classes are a good way to meet people with similar interests. Like everyone, I everyone I know who's done them, it does end up hanging out with them afterwards and mm. making some some. Yeah, friends. there's that aspect to it as well. I always I always thought I would love to take you know like at some point like. Probably not now, but like at some point in the future, I would love to take a night course on like woodworking or like, you know, like carpentry oh, yeah. or something like yeah, that. Yeah. I'd love to learn how to do some of that stuff um, and, and do it better as well, you know, so I could just do yeah. like a couple of little odd jobs, but not feel like... I don't know if you feel like this for Flax or well, maybe even you, Lewis, but like <laughs> anytime I, I try, like I have an idea to do something, but I just can't, I, I don't possess the tools to, to make it, you know? And then if I try, so, well, if I try to example. make it, like say example. like I want to make like, uh, I don't know, uh, like put a shelf up or something. You know, like mm. in my mind, I'm like, oh yeah, it should be really easy. But then I talk myself out of it all the time. Like, oh, what yeah. if uh, I need to find one of those things so I can see where the stud is? Uh, I need to find one of the things that can detect wires. I don't want to electrocute myself. You know what I mean? And then by the time I've gone through all that, I've just like talked myself out of it. Whereas I so feel you, like you want a tip for the studs? This is I did a DIY stream. Uh, oh, what you literally you're year. giving him a tip about that specific job? Yeah. Well, well, he, he listed sure. it as one of the ones that was. It was just off. an example job, but you sure, yeah. Right. So you can just get you can just get like a fridge magnet, <laughs> oh, like yeah. a fairly strong fridge magnet, and just pass it over the wall and where it'll literally stick to the stud. So you'll be able to find the beam and just avoid it that way. Right. Um. That that worked for me when I I had to, to uh, I did my uh, my eldest. We redid a room and I had to build all the furniture. It was all IKEA furniture. It took me like a week and a half. It was a lot. Uh, yeah. Like a big, big wardrobe with sliding doors, oh. two side shelving units, bed, desk, 
uh, and drawers. Was, for that, all was the, the desk integrated into the bed? Is it one of those? No, oh. no, it wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, she didn't want one of those. It, but it's wanted, a nice desk. She wanted a separate bed and a separate desk. Yeah, something that could fit a decent sized computer on. Right. Because uh, that's what she's angling for for Crimbo. Oh. It's a, a proper computer. And I promised her that if she's really good, she'll she'll get that. And she's been pretty good. So uh, we're thinking about that. Uh, she's a gamer. You know, she needs a proper PC. She, doesn't she need wants a laptop. Right. Yeah. But um, yeah. The, so I don't the, know. There's the some really the, good gaming laptops out there. There are. There are. I mean, I, I got a decent one for when I'm away for work and stuff like that, and uh, it's good. But um, it, it doesn't compare to the desktop, you know. And she's noticing some frame issues on games when she plays online, especially. But anyway, the piece of DIY that I have to attempt fairly soon, probably this weekend is removing the door in the living room and planing the bottom of the door off because it's catching on the floor. We've got wooden floors and in the, you know, they buckle and bow, even just a millimeter will throw it out of whack. So the door sticks when you close it. Um, so luckily it could be just weakness on the hinges though. It could be like not fully. So I checked the hinges. The hinges are fine. It's, it's, it's the floor. (laughs) It's Um, the door. Yeah. Yeah. P- playing it a couple of millimeters. You'll That's be what fine. I've got to do. <laughs> playing it a couple of millimeters. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, but a viewer of mine is bish, a bash, bosh, there, bosh, I would, uncle. again no, have no idea how to Planes. get started. So on that. here's the thing: you, you think it's going to be hard, and you think this is going to be impossible. For for instance, YouTube has a guide, and a guy showing you how to do every step. All the IKEA furniture I built, there's a video for each part, how to build it, some tips, every single thing. There are guides for every DIY thing you could possibly hope to do. And they'll sometimes say, this is really hard. So unless you're very confident, don't do it, get someone in. But the planing the door off, this guy, one of of my viewers, uh, shout out to Elliot, he sent me this big how-to with diagrams and everything about how to take the door off and and propping it up on a crowbar when you lift it up right. so you can do it one man, how to plane it, um, what direction to plane it. I'm not even confident, it. like, hammering a nail in, because I assume, like, water will come spraying out. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I literally the lowest fucking thing. I'm not even going to do that. Right. Like, yeah. Well, it, sometimes you just got to go for it. Like, um, I, I, for instance, we had, uh, we have a kitchen unit. I'm sure you guys have the same thing, where it's like, the sink is like some big slab of ceramic and or whatever. Uh, with the sort of draining board and the sink, all is one thing, you know? Yeah. And they sort of, you fit that into the kitchen countertop. We've got like granite work surfaces in the kitchen. So it's very hard to get around behind the sink. There's like no movement because there's a dishwasher there. And so in order- You got a big dishwasher or is it a slimline? No, no, it's like a slimline. It's like slides in. Yeah. So it's a decent size, you know, but it fits into- a family. Yeah, we got a family. We got got a slimline. We need a big one. Like- You need a big one. Oh my God. Full size. If we have a meal, we have, it's like two dishwasher loads. Oh, no, no, no. It's insane. We can put like three meals worth in there. Fuck. Um, And I, I, I will use one mug. All day. Oh, I'll see. use one glass all day. Uh, the yeah, rest of them, that. the rest of them, it's a fresh glass every fucking time. Uh, I Just make wash the, well, the one see, you've got. What I do with mugs, I make the big mistake. <laughs> I don't rinse my mug after I've used it. So then I just get that ring of congealed, dried up tea at the bottom yeah. of it. And it's really gross. So then I switch mugs. But if I, I was yeah. a, if I was a bit more on top of it and I rinsed out my mug in between teas, I would just use the same mug all day as well. Yeah, but I mean, so my, my uh, footprint on the dishwasher is minimal, but yeah. Mrs. F and the kids, I mean, Jesus Christ. Is there, I didn't even does know your dishwasher this have uh, Wi-Fi? Like, can you, no. can you, can you <laughs> no. use your phone to, to, to make it go, like when you're no, out of the no, house no. or whatever? I'm, I live with it. Or a timer? I don't need to send it a signal. I could just get out and push a button. Why do I need a Wi-Fi? I don't know. It's just kind of fun sometimes. I don't know how that would ever uh, be necessary. No. So, so would you join a class to learn this stuff? Sits. Would I, you like yeah, join I a, would. A, I, I a, think a handyman. I would even, even not just for like hard skills, but just to sort of get over the mental hurdles. You know, like I, I feel mm. like if I went to a class like this, and he was, and the and the guy was like, okay, today we're gonna make this, or today we're gonna practice doing this. You know, it would just be like. If I did it, I would be, I would, I would talk myself out of it less. You know what I mean? I, when it, when it came to it, I'd be like, oh yeah, I can do that. I, I know how to do that now. I've done this or whatever, you know, like, I feel like it's, I would go for that reason, but I feel like it would unlock a whole new world for me. You know, like there's a whole new world of DIY just waiting behind that door, but uh, right. I'm just too scared to to take a step into that so suddenly you'll be having ideas it'll give you ideas it's like oh yeah let's yeah you know what i mean like i'm i'm so close but like 
It's just something holding me it's, back. I, th- I think it, you're right. Like, I think there's a bunch of things. Like, one is that, you know, we're all over 40, so it feels like we should know better. Yeah. Two, it feels like, why do you need a class? You could just watch YouTube. Three, it's like expensive. I don't know. I like Four, to, it's like you have to go and see other people. I like a class, though. I like to be to around other people. I, like, you know, I, I don't, don't get me wrong. It's handy to watch YouTube and stuff, but... If I had an opportunity to go somewhere with people and I could speak to somebody about it, I would I would opt for that every time. I I, I don't know. It just seems yeah. a bit more. I think I get more out of it. You know, the YouTube video. Yeah, like I, I, think so. I find sometimes with YouTube videos, you watch it and they just make it look too easy. You know, and 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 you you're sort of like, oh shit, it's just as easy as that. And then when you go to do it, it's nothing like what they've done. I don't know. Yes, mm. I got I got asked to like a um still life drawing class. And I was like, I don't think this is something I want to do. Like, but proper nude woman there oh as well. Oh, my God. <laughs> Were and you sweating? Like, no, I didn't go. Panting? I didn't go. I was like, I, I backed Did out for a Did you do like the cartoon reasons. thing where you were like, oh, God, like do your eyes like, come out <laughs> of your head and stuff? But it would have been a good story. I should have. I should do this stuff, really. Yeah, well, I don't I, know I, why I, you don't. I should challenge myself. I feel bad for I feel not. like I would do way more of this stuff if I didn't have three kids you meet people who do this stuff right and are those outgoing brave people <laughs> i guess it's not that brave no to take it's a not class. it's just it's whatever but i don't know it feels like a hurdle that i i wouldn't necessarily normally be able to overcome um the other thing i would say is how incestuous they are like i remember my partner used to go to this class and there was a couple of them dating and then they broke up and started dating so it was like a little like class. it was like a little episode of eastenders like uh it was like a little in. group of friends yeah. yeah it was like the uh, friends the tv show very misnamed because they're all fucking sleeping with each other yeah well i mean friends were as well they just it was just presented a lot nicer but like i mean uh chandler and monica were at it remember ross and oh Rachel? yeah that's the point yeah and um wow. What's her face? And I don't think that was the intention. Joey. I think Chandler got cancelled, so I don't think anyone wants to fuck him now. I can't remember what he got what he got cancelled. Didn't he write a book and he had like some very hot takes on certain people or something? I, I it was something like that. I know he was really sick um with like drugs and he had some kind of health problems related to that as well. Oh. Right. I no, I don't think he got cancelled. I would have heard. Um <laughs> he's well, got a he's got a mailing list. Light can light cancelled. I guess it's there's different tiers of being cancelled. Yeah. Isn't there? There is, yeah. This reminds me of like <laughs> I always assume like someone like that, like David Duchovny being a sex addict. That was his problem. He was like He was addicted yeah, to sex. Stop, I can't stop fucking women. I, I I've <laughs> never understood I, I don't know if sex addiction is a real thing. It is apparently. Right, but there's 8 billion people on the planet. Aren't we just as a species addicted to sex? Is there really a claim that you can make? We do you have, have sex a more lot. into having sex well, m- with some, hot, some... hot people than other people. Well, I think that he's. I think his problem is his. He, he was cheating like a lot, a lot. Basically, every time he had a girlfriend, he would cheat on her. I don't right. think you um, can't claim sex addiction. That's just called you haven't found the right person. And instead, some other hottie comes in. You're like, I need a piece of that ass, and you just jump on it. Like it's not like you're saying. I can't help it. I'm a sex addict. That's bullshit. He was, he was admitted up. to rehab for sex addiction. Yeah, but in Hollywood, so, he was so addicted. It's such a to boast, sex. isn't it? <laughs> so, well, like, what kind of a... things do they say at sex rehab? Like, when you come in, like, are you allowed to jerk off or? <laughs> <laughs> what are the ten steps? So yeah, here you go. Um, this is from Wikipedia. According to uh, proponents of the concept, that's a bad opening sentence for Wikipedia. You're onto a loser if you're trying to claim this is a real thing. Sexual addiction, also known as sex addiction, is a state characterized by compulsive participation or engagement in sexual activity, particularly sexual intercourse, despite negative consequences. The concept is contentious. Neither of the two major mainstream medical organizations Categorization systems recognize it as a real medical condition, instead categorizing such behavior under labels such as compulsive sexual behavior. There is considerable debate among psychiatrists, psychologists, and sexologists. Oh, baby, that's a profession. What? Sexologist? Sexology. Sexology. I'm a sexologist. You could get... uh, Yeah, he runs a class. So this is not a... This is, yeah, I'm taking an evening class in sexology. Uh, It's just a class with one person in it. It's just me. Um, So, uh, yeah, some people are saying this (laughs) is is bullshit. Yeah, (laughs) join in. Um, I didn't go to the class. I just watch a lot of videos instead. Either way, (laughs) I I think... I don't... Obviously, I'm, I'm sure some viewers out there will claim 
that they're suffering from sex addiction or that it's a real thing. I think porn addiction. I think a there's thing, probably a lot sure. of people out there that are suffering from sex deprivement. If, uh, if that's probably true, it's not so much. They they probably feel like they are addicted to it, but they don't have uh, an outlet for their addiction. You know, like we I think it's we ran bad out of habits. A bad habit, like watching too much porn, for example, or like compulsively. That watching can be porn. A, an issue too. That's a bad habit. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm saying that I I don't think you could point to oh it's this I have a specific addiction to this. That's a bad habit. Be like if you drank well... too much coffee, you wouldn't say. I'm a ca I'm suffering from caffeine addiction. I'm I'm in recovery. You can no, get you addicted just have a bad to caffeine, habit. though. Yes, absolutely. But the point is, it's a bad habit that you need to get out I, of. Well, we don't need a fucking I guess special all... label. I'm a sex addict. No, you're just a piece of shit who's living a bad lifestyle and pissing people off. Deal with that. You don't go to I fucking think addict rehab. Is, Give me a. A break. lot of people get dependent on chemically dependent on stuff, though, right? Like nicotine is the classic, obviously, and and people do get. You know, I mean, alcohol, I'm sure coffee's the same and any drugs, really, that, that actually give you change your brain chemistry. And I think the same thing with things like porn, like the way it makes you feel, you know, it does obviously give you like the endorphins or whatever it is that, you know, those chemicals that make you feel good. And I think you can get addicted to that if anything makes you feel good. I'm sure people get addicted to things that are bad for them all the time. Um, but it's, I guess it's it's more if it's hurt, hurting your life and you're aware that it's hurting your life, but you can't stop it. You know, you're like, I want to stop washing so much porn, <laughs> but I can't stop. I just stop. can't stop. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's that's when it becomes like I'm a, just an issue very people wary. talk about, like an addiction. I'm very wary of things that Hollywood and Hollywood doctors have invented, and I'm pretty convinced that this whole sex addiction thing is a way to basically cop out, go to rehab, and wash your uh, your sins away, which is the very Hollywood Sorry way. Sorry I cheated on you, I'm, sex yeah. I'm a sex addict. Do you think David Duchovny has admitted himself multiple times for his sex addiction? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you think it becomes sort of like... Ah, David, at it again, eh? Just yeah, can't put stop. that dick away, David. <laughs> stop fucking everybody. Like, if you're if you're uh, going through a moment of fame, like Duchovny was, he was never that big. Let's be no, honest. No, he was. He, he, he was, had a TV show. Yeah, he was. He was a beagle. He was in a. The, he was the, one character in Zoolander. He was very well known at the peak of uh, X Files. But, yeah, I mean, it was you're, a big show. Going back but some. Years what's he now. done since? But essentially, if you're David Duchovny- He was in California Cation, wasn't he? Which was right, a fairly exactly. big We're, show. This guy's not an A-lister. He never I mean, he was played an A-lister. Like, um, he played like a sex addict in that, didn't he? In like California Cation. Yeah, he, he, he barely had there. to act. <laughs> 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 so, uh, so, uh, so a lot of the time, yeah, I, remember, I was talking to Harry about this and he was taking his, his little dog to um, a dog training class, right? Right. Training because he's got Pepper, who's this adorable that little sausage dog she's thing. She's gorgeous. Yeah, do not deep fry that dog. It's um, don't do it. It's it's so gorgeous. Um. Anyway, they were taking her to this class, and they were so <laughs> they went to this class, and they <laughs> the teacher said like, "Stop coming to this class <laughs> because you've trained. We trained your dog everything. It it's 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 it, we cannot teach you anymore." It's like one of the only times I've ever heard them say, stop, stop coming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you don't need this. Well, Peppa's amazing. I don't know if you've seen the video that Harry did where he was uh, showing off all her skills. Um, she can do- I think it's Harry's partner who's done almost all the training. Yes, I believe but, so. But, but um, this, this dog is talented. It can do everything. I know. It's, yeah, it's honestly I amazing. Like it's, it's not even like Peppa's not even very old and can already do like when he goes bang, she falls over and pretends she's been shot. She just does all these little tricks. So you're just like, I can't believe my dog can't do shit. <laughs> Aggie can't do shit. Your dog can't well, shit though. She shits. She shot on the fucking sofa the other night. So oh, yeah, we're well God, aware of that. Man, really? She's kind of a kind of a dingus. Yeah, Fuck. it happens. It like happens. a runny one? No, no, no. Just like a poop. Ugh, um, just but a... it was like so. The the problem is do dogs are very much built around routine. They love routine. They really do. Probably more than, much more than, than, than people do. You know, people kind of feel like, oh, I'm stuck in a rut. The more in a rut a dog is, the happier they are. They love routine. They right. want you to come downstairs at the same time every morning. They want to be fed at the same time every day. They want to go for a walk at the same time every day. Aggie's <clears throat> routine, sorry, is very straightforward. Um, during the day, Mrs. F or the kids come down in the morning. She's very happy to see them. They let her out straight away to use the toilet. She comes back in. We feed her. About an hour after that, she'll want to go out again. 
because she's been fed. Then she goes for a walk. Then she sleeps either downstairs or upstairs next to Mrs. F. If Mrs. F is working up here, she sleeps next to her. On our bed, she chills. Then about six o'clock, we all go downstairs and watch TV and hang out. She sits with us on the sofa. When I go upstairs to work in the evening, she moves over to my spot, stays there. If I She has a couple of games of Dota too. She plays a couple of games of Dota. She feeds terribly. It's real it's a real shame. But basically that's her daily routine. Now, if you change that routine, she gets a little bit flustered and sort of doesn't really right. know what she's meant to be and sort of looks sad and and uh, it's just that they, they love they love routine way 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 more than than you would expect. You, do you still so, play Dota every night? Yeah, pretty oh, much. Oh my god, man! It's his day job. I know, though. I know, he, I know, I know. But sharp. I I wish I had keep... that staying power with like a game, like like the amount of Dota that you've consistently played for as long as I've known you. Yeah, like I can't stick to a game like that. Well, but if you had to go to the world tournament and pres- and host a fucking, I would st- I would go, but I would just wing it. Like I would just I still wouldn't play the game that much. Like, yeah, but the dread, the dread makes you kind of think, oh god. I, I can't. suppose you, yeah. you worry about this all the time, Pflex. You always say to me, I I'm a, I'm an idiot at Dota. So why are they even inviting me? I have no knowledge. You know, well, you I, have I'm knowledge. Not expert, I'm I think not you have. Gamer. I think you have knowledge. I think you clearly. Yeah, have but knowledge he doesn't watch game. all the pro games and like super keep up with the pro strats and stuff. He's obviously not like an analyst or anything like close to exactly a, yeah, a yeah. pro. But he doesn't but need to fact, be though. They're not having him over to do analysis and stuff. They're... But your knowledge is so much deeper than the average chump that they bring in sometimes to host it on a whim. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Who um, clearly doesn't play Dota? Yeah, um, I mean, the, 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 there's. I think people misunderstand the the job of um of a host sometimes, or even if you're just there as like color analyst or whatever. Yeah, but I think also the idea of a casual fan of Dota kind of doesn't exist because you have to have you have to have thousand hours in it to to even be like considered yeah. to be a casual Dota player, right? But, but so the, those those guys and gals who are playing it for they oh I've I've just hit my 500th game, right? You know, those, those that that's not the biggest sort of uh, chunk of the the pro audience if you like. Like this is a, this is interesting because I was talking about this the other night. Um I don't want to get into games too much, but let's just talk about the way Dota's changed since I started working in it 10 years ago. Sorry, 11. Uh it, it used to be that this was Valve's baby, that all the top guys at Valve loved Dota 2 and had played it and were delighted to see how it was going. The Dota team was much bigger than it is now, and they had the first TI at Gamescom um, in 2011, and they basically, it was a million dollar prize pool. The players didn't believe them. They didn't think this was real. They thought it was a con. They honestly, they they had to, a bunch of them didn't turn up because they thought there's no way they're giving you a million dollars. It's a lie. They did do it. Uh, Navi won. It was like a big moment. And then it, it grew from there and it probably peaked in terms of like the production side of things and the price pool and everything around TI6, TI7, TI8. And then we had like things like it went to China and it wasn't wasn't particularly great. And then we had COVID and that was obviously really bad. And then they changed the way that the thing is structured. So there's less days in the big arena. That was like Singapore. And now this year, They've got this road to TI thing where it's more group stagey and off the main stage and more like in a little arena. And then the big stadium stuff is just the last three days. Right. Um, so I've seen this whole change in Dota. And in that whole time, I've met a few kinds of people. The absolute hardcore Dota fans who've played Dota 1, played with some of these pro players back in the day, back when you know there was no MMR system, you just played these games, you had all these little lands going everywhere, and Dota 2 came along and professionalized, for want of a better word, the scene and created this esports scene, essentially Dota 2 and Valve. And then you've got the fans who play, but are terrible and don't play every day, they play once a week, sometimes on a Saturday night, they'll get together with their mates playing a game of Dota, they're terrible, but they have fun every- anyway. They only watch TI. They don't watch any pro Dota the rest of the year, mm. ever. And then you have the people who don't play, they just watch. They yeah. love watching it. They don't play it at all. They're too scared to play. Well, that's me play. now. Right. Like, I'm like a lapsed player, but I still watch stuff sometimes. Yeah. But there are yeah. some people I know who have only ever played against bots. They have just play against bots. They're too scared to play against or with people, but they love watching TI. Are they, are they scared because they think they're going to get flamed by their teammates? Yes, exactly, yeah. When I was younger, I I didn't understand why this was a thing. I was like, why on earth would you just watch someone else play this game but never play it yourself? And I think that it changed when I started watching StarCraft 2 videos. Yes, yeah. that's a and big I, one. 
because I hate playing that game, but I really like watching someone Same. good. Yeah, at I used that. to yeah. really and watch so, StarCraft too. It's such a discrepancy. I loved all the the tournaments, the early tournaments, like oh, during yeah. the beta. I used to watch Day Nines daily, every day, yeah. and stuff. Like it was Husky, Husky, Husky yeah, yeah. yeah. H- I mean, that HD was HD Star Hut, and then Husky. It, it, yeah, it, it, it's, it was, it's really it nice to see someone really good at something showing that off right yeah. and i think that's what youtube often is right it is the, these focuses on individuals who have a passion or have experience doing something yeah. like, well I either want to teach you it it's like going to a class i mean dota 2's been going for a long time yeah uh, and you're right it was gabe's baby you know yeah. back in the day and certainly like he was obviously a fan of that and you know um things like cs csgo and and it made valve relevant you know they needed games for their for their platform yeah they're a and they're a platform maker, really, not a game maker, but they needed some, something to sort of show off. They, they, every time they bring out a new piece of hardware or something, you know, they have to make some game for it just to just to give it that. Oh, here's something. It's almost like a tech demo, yeah. you know, to show off. But I think those games have been analyzed so and, and built based on all of these other things. You know, they've had economists come in and or advise yeah. them on how to build this economy. And, you know, they've, they've re- they were the first people to make a free-to-play game. You know, TF2 was like the first free-to-play game. And it still apparently makes a huge amount of money today, um, which is my, amazing. My eldest you, still plays Team Fortress. Yeah, you can't have yeah. Dota 2 going on for so long without it changing. I mean, it's a TI, what are we up to? How many of them? This is 14? TI 12. This is TI 12. 12? I mean, yeah. God, it's, it's, it's. Which started we, yesterday. I mean, Jingle Jam's been going 13 years. It'll be 13 years this year. And it's changed a lot. And it has to, right? Like, I, I, I do fear always that, you know, what about the next time? You know, I fear about, I, I worry like things will, is it still relevant? Is this still a, a decent model that we're doing? And how long can it last? You know, the, the Jingle Jam hinges on so many things in a sense. It hinges on Valve allowing us to generate all these hundreds of thousands of keys to send out. It hinges on, you know, the developers all being, having goodwill. It depends on people like Unity not doing these sort of weird things, you know, that could crash yeah. into the ground. It's kind of very fragile, but at the same time, my philosophy is it, it, it has to be, we just, we just have to... It, my, my, I guess my number one word is inclusion, right? We want to get as many uh, developers to give their games, but we also want to get as many creators as possible. To we want a bunch of charities and we want, a, we want to be, we want something for everyone, you know, a bunch of streams that represent, you know, all, all people involved in Jingle Jam. Cause it, it's, it can never be, um, it could never, it could never be bad if, if, if you have so many people with so many ideas and so many cool, um, passionate, you know, individual there's some coming in there, making mm-hmm. it something different. I, I don't know, like, I do worry that you have to change and I fear the shape that that will take. But sometimes, you know, um, but we seem to have bumbled on so far. And it's the same with Yogs, you know, and, and everything we do, we all worry that, oh my God, what, what, it's, it feels, everything feels so fragile, right? Like what happens if um, Amazon just decides to shut Twitch down? Oh, I guess. Yeah. I guess we're fucked, but no, I we're mean, not it was fucked. Like, it's, like, yeah. there's, there's some, there'll be something that comes along, right? Or some way out. It's not, people will see this stuff coming usually. Yeah. And yeah. it's not as, it's not as blindsided. I mean, if you were a Vine creator or a Mixer creator, then, you know, I suppose you did build your house upon the sand, but, um, you know, <laughs> that was, you, you, you just got to, you, you the, but this, this, this applies to like a lot of different aspects of, Life as well. You just gotta. You gotta give it a go. You can't think I'm not gonna do that because in a year, whatever. Like you, you might, you might apply to work at a company. You don't know if that company is gonna be around in a year. It could be the biggest right. company in the yeah. world. They might not be around in a year. Companies look at, downsize, look change, disappear all the damn time. Like it's not just on the internet. It's it's it, you know it's that's that applies to so so many things. Like you just have to. You just gotta. You just got to go for I it. I don't think, I, yeah, I don't think you should fear the idea of of educating yourself in a pointless way, right? Like because you're that's that's never a bad investment to make. No. It, you know, if you if you're if you if you're good, if you're a good content creator on a pla- on one platform and you've had success, you'll find it on another platform as well. It's not like yeah. you know you see these people go viral on TikTok and Instagram and other things like Tom Bates is you know uh, yeah. animations is yeah, so yeah. good. And they have gone, you know, independently gone viral on these different platforms, right? And so I think stuff that is good, good these days, it's the best time to be like this, 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 you know, like Joe Pera, 
I'm sure that that is, you know, with you talking about him and like this huge, like Schlatt is fucking the top comment on his, on this video you linked to PFLEX, you know, what? and he's a massive uh, creator, Who? one of the biggest there is at the moment on. What? Uh, what video did I send you? The, 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 the comedy special, Joe, Com Joe oh, yeah. Perry's comedy special. Joey, like it's, it's very common to see this stuff um, going on, right? Like these, 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 the algorithm does bring out new 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 create new it finds quality um dynamically you know you you can you can i, I don't want to say trust but you can it feels weirdly fairer than it's ever been yeah you know back in the day it was just you you were the first one you're big you're the one you know remember I mean? the, remember shit. remember way back in the day remember reply uh girls exactly <laughs> like these like all people are abusing the so algorithm. Fucking weird. Oh, my reply God. girls. Yeah, you remember that? Back in the day, P Flex, there was this busted thing on the YouTube algorithm where if you replied to a video, a popular video, you would get sort of boosted. You'd right? get and recommended so alongside these, the video. Uh, there'd be a couple of girls who looked like they were being held hostage in some Eastern European sweatshop, yes. um, and they would they would literally record a reply with them. To talking, they'd watch a video, not even watch it, like just yeah, it would re reply to a video, and the thumbnail would be them with a big pair of boobs, and that was such. Oh, yeah. I just that watched such... the video, the new video by Blue the Force. I yeah, think it like... was a Minecraft video. <laughs> like it was just that. It was basically just that. But you, I guess, people tuned in because these women all had Titties! large breasts that you could. You I know, think they it were... was was it was. It was just, for some reason, it was this viral thing at the time that was just every big video on YouTube had some woman, multiple women, with with booby thumbnails replying to it. And I guess it was the early, uh, before, that they would nowadays be thoughts, TikTok thoughts or whatever. <laughs> 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 I, think, I think that's the right word. Am I saying uh, that right? Am I saying that right, son? Thoughts. I was watching. Get uh, them out of my I was, sight, I was watching Married at First Sight last night, and one of the contestants on the show, they were having a big group discussion, and uh, I think the question was like, which which couple do you think is like doing the best so far, or something like that? And one of the one of the women was like, uh, you know, the two of you. I, I didn't I didn't think at first, but you know what? I ship it now. <laughs> my, my wife was like what the fuck right. did she just say and i said oh god i don't even want to explain it it's so fucking yeah. stupid I, I don't know why you would ever utter those words but there she was on tv saying it like it's fucking so i, I always thought that people would say these things semi-ironically uh, yeah, yeah. but they, they really do become part of language that people were using in a serious uh, way like you know the yeah. one that annoys me at the moment is it's giving it's giving it's giving humble but it's also giving look at me you know it's like it's giving so right. it, you describe something like it could be anything well like you walk into a coffee shop it's giving cozy one of one of them hit what the fuck one of them hit I hate like that. it was an entire sentence of uh, individual like like things that you hear on the internet, but like yeah, eh, but like he was like he was like oh when the when the when the power is overwhelming and and she walks in in her full truth or something like that. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck are you saying? Like this is this is insane. You cannot speak like this out there in the world. Like nobody understands this stuff. Like it's, apparently they do. Uh, like that's the thing is their generation will happily talk like that. We're old now. I guess. I, I mean that's it. Uh, I'm sure they said the same thing about us in the 90s. Well, when we were when saying, we were saying gnarly radical and dude, that's gnarly. Dude. <laughs> yeah, cowabunga, man. Like, you said cowabunga, you won't get far in the business world talking about <laughs> talking about cows and bungas. I don't know what you're thinking. This is the it's hard because being over a certain age feels weird. It feels weird for me to say slay <laughs> when, so, when someone does great something to hear good. You say it. Look, I it's... use this kind of lingo all the time, mainly to wind my kids up, but sometimes they'll catch themselves talking to me and I'll be using the same slang that they do subtly, like I'm an undercover cop. You know what I right. mean? And they'll suddenly yeah. they'll suddenly notice that I'm saying things like it's giving just to wind them up. And they're like, Dad, stop. You know, it, it, I love it. Yeah. Uh, you are... It's it's I, really see, I, cracks I'm, me up. I'm lucky because I don't have a British accent. So right. my 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 one is I I do my stupid London accent, but my kids <laughs> love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in the it's kitchen. So bad. <laughs> my kids will be like 
Dad, can I can I have something to eat? All right, Nigel, I'll get you something to eat. I can't just let it. So bad. Oh fuck. Oh, it's so funny. Uh, uh, it's like a proper EastEnders, but like sort of uh, just like, 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 like ro- just just wrong. Bad and and uh, um oh, man. and uh, insincerely <laughs> exaggerated. You need to go to a class to have to learn some no, accents. I, I don't need to. That is something I think would be, will be helpful for no. me to do. Hey, I actually got some somebody. I was getting my hair cut the other day, and my hairdresser was like. Hey, you Canadian? Like she she was not Canadian. She was like, wow. uh, you know, from from Jersey or whatever. And I was like, yeah. She's like, oh yeah, I recognize the accent. I was like, well, you're the first because what the fuck heck? me? Like I've been called everything. <laughs> uh, like the other day, yeah. I I told you guys about this the other day. The guy's like, hey, you Australian? I was like, no. Like I don't I fucking sound like anything like an Australian. I don't know like yeah, what Australia people, you've been to recently, but people don't know, do they? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. By I the think- way, I've, I've just uh, I've just calculated five hundred days of Dota. I've played just under five hundred days. That's in that the last eleven years. That's insane. It's eleven thousand, nearly twelve thousand hours. I so think just, just I under. think for me, like in terms of time played, like in of all time. Dota's funnily enough one one of my higher played, and then yeah. World of Warcraft for sure. But you're of talking course. about, I mean, I've been playing World of Warcraft uh, off and on since 2004, and yeah, I've been yeah. playing Dota 2 off and on since it came out in 2010 or 11 or whatever. Right, right, yeah. And and even then on Steam, my I, I've got like 1300 hours in Dota 2, but spread across oh, you play a, a decade. Lot of games. Yeah, so yeah. it's like like I, I generally still play it every day. Yeah, like one of my one of my other most played games is XCOM 2, and I consider that a game I played a oh, lot. Oh, I played that recently. Actually, I went back yeah. and did a. I'm in the middle run. of a long war great. playthrough. 550 hours. Okay, you. I mean, value for money. You told me but, not to play long war. Does this still stand? Would uh, you say no? So I, I would. If you want to get frustrated, if you want to hurt go. yourself, yeah. But I, I installed a mod, and it I actually I might be not, fine for streaming. Oh, it's fun because, to stream, but, yeah. but you will literally. Oh, this is going okay, and then all of a sudden you'll be on a mission, and your entire team will get wiped, and the aliens are like way out of your league. Ah. So I installed a mod called A Better Start, right. which gives you a bunch of resources and makes things like healing from injuries quicker, research quicker, engineering quicker, you build things quicker, because the game gets out of control really quickly. And I wanted tell to try you, and um, figure out I pl- what the fuck I was doing wrong. I played that one, was it Xeno- Xenonauts? Yeah, oh, the yeah. new one came out. Yeah, Xenonauts 2 came out. It, well, it's early access, and it's only about six hours long at the moment. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, really? Oh. I, I, I struggled uh, to enjoy that. I thought I would really enjoy it, and I just found it very just frustrating like it was just yeah. very authentic to the original XCOM yeah. which is a very different vibe it's very yeah, different I just I think maybe just XCOM 2 has spoiled me because it's just it's just such a great it's game so good. It is, it's XCOM so 2 good. is honestly such a pinnacle like there's tons of these games coming out all the time like the Lamplighters League came out recently which was like not themed. well received but, but but the problem is they 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 all come out in a world where XCOM two exists yeah. and yet they don't learn the lessons. Oh my god! I love dude, how this is I love preach, brother. Preach. I love how I good the game is, but I love how goofy it is at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Like it's, it's just, just the such, balance is perfect. It is so perfect. It's like I, I'd say like. It's one of my one of my all time favorite games. Like, Absolutely. like it's just Hands it's down. such a well made game and and so replayable too. You can go back to it after a couple of years and like I hadn't played it for years. I played it recently. I loved it. Like it was just it's it's, it's such perfect. a joy to play through yeah. again. Yeah, great. So here's my thing that they made the Chimera Squad, the, um, which was like a little add on, and I thought that they're, t- they're testing out some new mechanics. Yeah, yeah. New I kind of yeah, like the, the, the room like. based stuff. Was interesting. right. I like yeah. that. So if you had multiple ingress methods to a mission, sometimes you're kicking doors, sometimes you're doing the airdrop, sometimes you're surprised. You know, yeah. you could just have the lads at the base, and then suddenly, it's, oh shit, they come, and you got to grab the guns, or whatever. Yeah. Um, I was really hoping there would be an XCOM 3. I know that the stories behind the scenes are the lead dev and all the guys are left and XCOM 2 is basically not going to happen with, I think it's take two, isn't it? And the, with the same team. So what you're saying, Lewis, about how all these other games come out, why aren't they learning the lessons from XCOM 2? I, I cannot explain it because it would I be like- I can't explain it. Sometimes it's like I'm playing a game and I'm like, have these guys not played XCOM yes. 2? 
Because what are you thinking? Where is the mechanic for yes. for the the basic mechanic like like mousing over where you're moving and yeah, does it show a flanking location? Yes, like very basic stuff is not in these games. Yeah, like almost like first page of the design document yeah. stuff. So yeah, the first really page funny. should be look at all the stuff XCOM Two did well. We're going to do all of that and we're going to add some stuff that isn't just That's needlessly exactly complicated. what it needs. It just needs to have a spin. Right? Yeah. On it. Anyway. But don't don't I, I get set this it a lot. in the fucking 30s. Like, who? no one gives a shit about that era. I'm sorry. It's a fucking boring era to play. Just set it in the 30s and they've got like revolvers and canes and umbrellas. Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck off. Yeah. We want we want magnetic weapons and robots. That's what we want. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want, oh, I shall have you with my rapier, dear boy. And like, oh, they're all characters. No, I want to be able to name and customize yes, my characters. Yes, all the customization. I want the storylines yeah. behind the characters. I want missions to go badly wrong sometimes. I want people to get fucking left behind and then we go back and rescue them. I don't want to have to worry about ammo. I don't want to have to be like, I'm out of ammo. I want to waste an action reloading. Don't fuck me around with ammo. It feels like in XCOM as well, you're on a journey, right? And it's slow in places. I think a lot of games don't realize how you have to add boring, slow shit to them. Like if you're a game dev, you're like, why would I add boring, slow shit to my game? But Actually, when you think about all the games you love, it feels like it's immersive to slowly move through and slowly have this journey and see all aspects of the journey. And yes, some bits you'd like to skip forward through, especially cutscenes. I mean, God, but um, it's it, like Starfield is the major problem where it feels like because you're constantly fast traveling, you're constantly zipping around. Like there's so many mechanics in there that make the game quicker. Like, for example, like, even just the simple aspect of being in the pilot seat and pressing, holding E to teleport to planet, right? So you don't even have to get up. You don't have to walk to the door. You don't have to, listen to, you know, it, it, the, the, it feels like what they've done is they've had it in production for so long. They've played it for so long. The team are like, oh, let's add some quality of life stuff to make right. this game quicker and easier to play through. But by doing so, it's ripped out that sense of immersion that you need. Mm. And I, I, I almost stopped playing Starfield because, and in fact, I have. Because I started to think there's going to be a load of mods for this that will make it a good game, and mm. I don't want to ruin my the story. Yeah, well, while well, I'm waiting for in it. this game for myself, while the game is bad, because I, I, and it's not bad, but it is bad. No, like I just, I just, <laughs> no, it's, it's the it's, most Lewis way it's, of putting it, something. It, 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 it's typical Bethesda. It'll be better once Asses of Starfield comes out, and also yeah. the Innie mod, uh, so that you don't have every <laughs> every woman's <laughs> pussy in Starfield isn't an Audi. It, it corrects it. That's and makes them oh in God. an innie instead. What it's only fuck? a matter of time. <laughs> that, is a, that is an actual Skyrim mod, by the way. That was when, that's when Skyrim <laughs> became good. That's an oh, actual Skyrim mod. Fucking hell. Sorry for a little rant there at the end, but uh, that's... I'm just disappointed. And I know it'll be good. And it's the same thing with Cyberpunk. Um, apparently, the new, apparently the new Cyberpunk is um, really good. The new DLC Yeah, yeah that's what it. they're all saying. I'm going to play that maybe after Christmas. So I, I think that's, that's my next thing I'm going yeah. to go at. Yeah. But yeah, try but, Long War yeah. Sips. Just try it. Try the base Long War of the Chosen mm -hmm. and, and see how you get on. Don't play it on a harder difficulty. Play it on the second difficulty. All right. And don't try to Iron Man it. Um, just because it does crash occasionally, right? Okay. But but honestly, give it a go. Yeah, and then then get back to me. Okay. Let me know how you found I it because it's a fucking ball bag, mate. <laughs> okay, I it's will. hard. Yeah, it's hard. Good. sometimes that's good. It's like yeah, it's like it's installing hard. a really hard mod for a game. Yeah, it changes it. But, but you will literally you you'll be like it's okay, it's okay, and then you'll pull a pod and it'll be like an eight man pod and they've all got ten health and it's like fuck. What you're, do I do? It's really like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. There's all people. People in chat will help you with tips and stuff. But yeah, I had to read GitHub guides. I've been watching YouTube guides, and I'm even then I'm struggling. So Fuck. it's hard. Okay. All right. All right, all right boys. Hot tips. Thank you hot for listening. Hot gaming tips. Hot movie tips. Hot I'll TV tips. I'll talk to you from Seattle next week. Yes. Good luck. Hopefully. Have a safe Thank trip. You. Have a good time. Thank you guys. Thank you. I appreciate all right. it. We love you. Bye. 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 Bye.